The confrontation between Bill Mayer and Caitlin Collins serves as a microcosm, encapsulating the broader challenges plaguing American media and society. Their debate highlights the profound divisions and pervasive distrust that define today's political and media landscapes. You made press because you were on Stephen Colbert's show, and he said something like, um, you guys at CNN just report the news straight, and the crowd burst into laughter. That tells you a lot, doesn't it? I mean, how, how do you guys think you are doing this, in that arena of like, this is a terribly divided country. We're not only politicized. A lot of people just hate the other side. And CNN, in my view, should be the place where both sides can watch. How do you think you're doing with that? How is CNN, CNN is the place where both sides can watch. And, and I think, you know, my show is evidence of that. We have lawmakers on from both parties. We'll have Elizabeth Warren on one, one night. We'll have Ted Cruz on. Uh, another night. I think lawmakers from both parties yeah. should take questions and you should push both of them. But but on the on CNN being a place of credibility, I mean, look at what just happened in Chicago. We had 300 people from CNN on the ground covering that convention. There were f- several reporters from just our team alone on the floor, uh, bringing it in real time to people. And I think CNN puts resources behind things and just brings a level uh, of news that you don't get anywhere else. And, and I think CNN does. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking that. about the people on CNN and what I, I know what the conservative side of America thinks, and I don't blame them. I watched Kamala's speech last night. It ended at 8.09, I guess 11.09 in the East. It wasn't until 11.23 till the, conser- the one conservative guy, what's his name? Scott Jennings. This lonely Scott, I call him. David Urban was there too. Wait a second, wait a second. I watched from 8.09 to 8.23, they were just gushing about how great a speech it was. And I think she did fine. I didn't think it was as good as they were making it out to be. But if I'm a conservative in America and I'm watching CNN, just for the straight middle of the road. That's what I hear for 15 minutes is it's great. And then Lonely Scott. <laughs> it does look, I mean, and when you see the pattern, it does look like tokenism. It's kind of like the same as The View. It's like it's almost better to have nobody there, like MSNBC, than to have this. Mars' critique of Collins underscores a widespread skepticism towards mainstream media outlets like CNN. The audience's laughter in response to CNN being labeled objective mirrors the public's perception of the network's inherent bias, reinforcing the belief that CNN operates not as a neutral news source, but as a mouthpiece for the Democratic Party. This sentiment stems from numerous instances where conservative viewpoints are either sidelined or disregarded, fostering a deep-seated mistrust in media organizations such as CNN. Maher's observation of a 14-minute delay between Kamala Harris's speech and its broadcast exemplifies CNN's frequently skewed narrative, suggesting that the network does not provide a balanced platform for diverse perspectives. This scenario emphasizes the critical role of media authenticity and responsibility in shaping public consciousness. CNN's claim to offer a platform for all sides can be interpreted as a deceptive maneuver contributing to societal polarization by presenting a facade of impartiality. When a media outlet fails to uphold its professed values, it alienates viewers who depend on it for unbiased news, leading to feelings of disillusionment and estrangement. Stephen Colbert's laughter during the debate can be seen as a collective acknowledgement of CNN's partiality, unmasking the network's bias with humor. This interaction reveals a deeper societal issue, the erosion of trust in institutions that are expected to maintain fairness. Maher's interrogation of CNN's objectivity, juxtaposed with Collins's defense, exacerbates the existing divide in media perception across different segments of the population. The resulting laughter and Maher's criticism no longer accommodate diverse viewpoints reflecting a collective dissatisfaction with the current media climate. This dynamic fosters a feedback loop where individuals increasingly turn to news sources that reinforce their pre-existing biases, thereby intensifying social polarization. Collins's assertion that CNN serves as a platform for all viewpoints exemplifies a form of cognitive dissonance, where the network's self-perception clashes with the public's perception. This dissonance transcends mere media issues, mirroring a broader crisis of trust and communication within contemporary American society. 